Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Today we're checking out a brand new case from Fractal, but before that, make sure you're subscribed and hit that little bell to receive all the notifications. In this video, we're checking out the brand new Fractal Torrent Nano. So without further ado, let's pull it apart, do a build, test the thermals, and do all the things that we do here for our case reviews. So let's jump in. All right, let's start off with panel removal. The panels are very easy to remove on this case. It's got this little plastic tab for the glass side panel. You basically just pop it off and it'll lift up and away from the case. The rear panel is exactly the same deal here. Same thing, plastic tab, lift it and pull the glass away. The top panel, grab this edge here and just pull it away and it will pop off and slide away. And the front panel just grab the top edge, pull it, and away we go. In the front of the case, you'll notice there's this massive 180 millimeter fan. This fan can be removed. You can install different brackets and you can change it to regular fan mounting as well, which I'll come back to in a moment. On the back side of the case, you'll notice there's some cable management channels here for let's say a 24 pin power connector. There's other Velcro straps along the bottom here as well to assist with cable management and three more to assist with running extra cables. So in terms of cable management at a glance, it doesn't look too bad. There's also additional tie down points around the back of the motherboard tray as well. Cable management clearance between the motherboard tray and the side panel you're looking at 29 millimeters for jamming all your cables back there. The Torrent Nano supports both ITX and DTX motherboards. And one thing I really wanted to make clear with this is there's a difference between ITX cases and small form factor cases. This is an ITX case, not a small form factor case. If you're wanting to install an air cooler in the Torrent Nano, you're looking at a maximum height of 165 millimeters for air cooler clearance. This should allow for most decently sized air coolers to fit in here. And I would go as far as saying as this case would be more optimized for air cooling rather than using any type of liquid cooling. But there are options for that, which I'll touch on in a moment as well. As mentioned, because this is an ITX case, not a small form factor case, this case supports full size ATX power supplies up to 200 millimeters in length. So most power supplies that you'll want to use with this case, you shouldn't have any problems fitting in here. I actually think this is nice as it does give you options for cheaper alternatives but you could still do an SFX power supply if you had the appropriate bracket. The Torrent Nano also has hard disk or SSD mounting on the top of the case. Now this can actually be adjusted in two positions. So you've got the stock installation position that comes out of the factory. And then you have a position that is further forward if you were to be using a slightly longer power supply. While we're on the topic of hard disk mounting and SSD mounting, there's two more additional 2.5 inch SSD mounts on the back side of the motherboard tray. And this whole panel here can also be removed with this single captive thumb screw. Okay, the bit you've been waiting for, fan and radiator placement. On the bottom, if you were doing a custom loop, you could do up to a 280 millimeter radiator. You can also do a 240, you can also do two 120 mil fans if you're air cooling or you're going down our path or two 140 mil fans as well. On the rear of the case, you can fit a single 120 millimeter fan or a 120 mil radiator if you're gonna go down that path. But if you're gonna be doing that, you might as well just air cool because air coolers are far more efficient than 120 mil AIOs. This is where this begins to get interesting. So much like the original torrent, the front can be reconfigured. So what we can do here is we can remove this front fan, which I'm probably gonna do for this build. I haven't decided yet. So essentially what you do is we're gonna take out this front fan. You then remove the screws around the edge here. So you remove, basically you remove the blanking plate in two sections. So you've got a top and a bottom section. You then grab this accessory box that comes with the case. It's also got a GPU support bracket, which we're gonna to come to as well. Using these brackets here, there's two in total. We can then reconfigure the front, 240 mil right up the front, two 120 mil fans or a 140 mil radiator. 
There's also markings on these panels as well that show you where the appropriate screw hole is and there's notches here and here so you can offset these brackets for the correct fan or radiator size. We're going to set this in the 120mm fan position so just line them up with those notches and then you're ready to use radiators or a fan on the front of the case and you cut it and you don't have to use that 180mm fan up the front. But if you're air cooling with this case, I would go as far as saying as leaving that 180mm fan up there. As mentioned previously, in that accessory kit, there is also an included GPU support bracket, which basically lines up with this groove here. And there's two thumb screws. I'm just doing this quickly because the truth is I haven't even decided if this is something that I'll use when I build in this case. That said, there's an additional groove here if you've got a shorter GPU for GPU support as well. For the internal wiring and front panel connectivity, we've got a USB Type-C connector, USB 3.2 for Type-A connectivity, the front panel audio connector, the connectors for all your lights and all your switches and all that jazz, and an addressable RGB connector for the included and integrated RGB strip on the power supply shroud. Full front panel connectivity, or rather top panel connectivity in this case, you've got a headphone jack, a microphone jack, two USB type A ports, you've got a power button, a USB type C port, and a reset button. This section here on the power supply shroud is the addressable RGB strip that I mentioned. So you get a little bit of accented lighting here as well. Okay, this is the most complicated thing about building in this case, and this is GPU support. So this is where you'd really need to research what would fit in your own system. So with the pre-installed fan, it's a very, very thick fan, right? So most of the time, if you're using this fan, you should have the full GPU clearance, which is 335 millimeters with this fan installed. The GPU should actually land somewhere underneath this fan. So most of the time you'll get the full clearance with this fan installed. If you're using a front radiator, you're actually changing that because the radiator will basically take up all of the space of the whole front of the case. So let's just do the Strix test with no fans in the front, just to give you an idea of what it would be like if that 180 was pre-installed. So if it was pre-installed, you would have no problems fitting the Strix GPU in here, right? The next question is, if I was to be using the Strix GPU or a GPU that was a triple slot card, would I be able to install fans underneath? If you're using those thin Noctua fans, you could probably make it fit, which are 12, 0.5 millimeter stick. So probably for those, but for regular fans, definitely not. Also, one thing I'll mention about the Strix GPU being in here is I do not think you'll fit a 240 mil AIO in here. We probably won't be using the Strix GPU in here because it's just not going to fit. Also to answer the question that we always get is, can I vertically mount a GPU in whatever case? No, not happening here. Sorry guys, you're not gonna be able to vertically mount here at all. For dust filtration, you've got a removable dust filter on the front panel of the case, as well as a removable dust filter on the bottom of the case. All right, I think that's basically everything we need to talk about for now with the Fractal Torrent Nano. So I think it's time to do a build and then we'll test the thermals and then I'll let you know what I think about this new case from Fractal. Let's jump in.
All right, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the build in the Fractal Torrent Nano. Let's quickly take a look at the thermals of this case. What you're seeing on screen right now is the thermals aren't too bad. We're getting really good CPU thermals here. And for a founder's card with fans blowing straight in, we're actually not seeing too bad thermals for the GPU either. They could be better if I'm being honest, but given that there's only a single point of exhaust on this case, I actually don't think it's too bad whatsoever. Pretty straightforward thermals there, right? Nothing too exciting. Okay, now that the thermals are out of the way, I wanna do a quick side-by-side -side size comparison just so you guys can get an idea of the size of this case. Now, I mentioned in our last small form factor video with the A4H2O that we don't have many small form factor cases or ITX cases here at the moment because we moved everything that we had over to our warehouse. So I'm basically using what I've got here. So let's take a look right now. And as you can see, it is much bigger than the NR200 and the A4H2O which is no surprise here. I was even debating whether or not I should put the A4H2O inside because actually I might actually be able to do that, but probably not because the GPU that I used in the A4H2O with the cooling solution in that case doesn't fit in here. But realistically, that's not really a big deal. Let's be honest, the case looks pretty great. And that's the only reason why you'd buy the Nano anyway, because it looks really good. Let's talk about the parts. The CPU is the Intel Core i7-12700K. We put the 12700K on the ASUS ROG Strix Z690i gaming Wi-Fi. To cool the 12700K, we use the Fantex Glacier 1 240 MP. The RAM is 16 gigs of crucial DDR5 at 4800 mega transfers with a cast latency of 40. The GPU is the NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti Founders Edition. All the fans in the case are the Leon Lee AL120 Uni fans. There are five in total. There's two on the front, two on the bottom, and one up the back. All of the lighting for these fans is configured in L Connect 2 and also AuraSync for the motherboard and all the other stuff. Okay, so how about the Fractal Torrent Nano? Well, to build in, it's ridiculously easy because you have to remember, guys, yes, this is an ITX case. But ITX case does not necessarily mean that it is small form factor. Yes, it's small. No, it's not small form factor. So you've got a lot of room for play. In terms of cable management, I didn't try too hard. You can see in this clip here that it looks really messy, but still not too bad. Everything is still quite accessible. The cable management on the top of the case, which I liked with the original torrent, is still here with the ITX version and it is very easy to manage the cables up there. I said this with the original torrent as well. I would like to see a solid back panel because I just don't think it matters. You don't need to see all the stuff that's back there. It just doesn't make sense, especially on a small case like this. Yeah, you just don't need to see any of that back there. And it's tinted glass as well, so why not just make it a solid panel? There's no lighting back there. Anyway, to be honest, I don't really have much more to say about this case because there isn't really that much to dislike about it. Thermal performance is pretty good, and I'm guessing everyone's saying the same thing as well. Ease of use and building is very, very easy. It is very versatile. It's definitely not the smallest ITX case on the market, but it is one of the best looking ITX cases on the market. Because if you're interested in getting your hands on the Fractal Torrent Nano, they're starting at around 129 US dollars or around 199 Australian dollars at the time of filming. And they should be available as of the time of filming this video. I checked the Australian stock and looks like there's plenty here in Australia to go around. Let us know your thoughts about the Fractal Torrent Nano. Now, I know it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea considering there's people who really love small form factor. There's people who like things that are slightly bigger in the ITX range of cases. So, you know, let us know what you think. I think it looks great. It's really easy to build in. Personally, if I'm being honest, not a case that I would personally use for a system of mine. Just, it's either gotta be big to fit all of my hardware that I want or small enough to hide away somewhere and fit everything that I want. 
It can't be in the middle for me, right? And this is where this is for me, right in the middle. But let me know your thoughts. And if you like the music, you can click that join button to get it down below. You wanna get early access to some of our videos, go on over to Floatplane. You can also grab the music to download over on Patreon as well. If you like the video, just click the subscribe button. Ring the bell to get notifications. Click the like button if you like the video. If you're not subscribed and you watch all of our content, it's easy, just click subscribe. You're doing us a favor. You're doing yourself a favor because you get to see cool content like this. And look at the graph. See this graph right here, the one right in front of you. You may or may not understand what it's saying. It's saying that there's lots of you that watch, but you don't click subscribe. So just click subscribe. It's very easy, right? If you had a channel that made cool content, kind of like what we do here, I would subscribe to your channel too. Just do what I would do. Be a good person, click subscribe, and support the channel. Or maybe not. It's up to you. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your Wendy with Gear Seekers. You peek. We you seeking? Because it's little, it's time for a little bit of a cinematic thing. Thanks for watching and enjoying.